Hello, beautiful black people. I am so glad that you guys are here today. We are going to talk about Trace the Series. And just to start off, can you guys just, you know, briefly introduce yourself and your part into the series? Hi, I'm Eugenia Washington. I play Detective Miller in Trace. I'm Gary Leroy Gray. I play Detective uh, Williams in Trace. My name is Spencer Collins and I play Detective Ramos. And I'm also one of the directors on Trace. Oh, and producer. Hello, I am Anthony Vaughn. I am the creator and the writer, executive producer, and one of the directors on Trace. All right, great, great. So, Anthony, I'm going to start with you. So, okay. take me back. How did Trace come about? You know, <laughs> especially considering the opening says, you know, it's based on some true events. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I, tra uh, Trace was a two year project in the making. Um, Cause I wanted to do something like, I I've never done anything that was uh, fact driven. So um, I did my research on uh, just trying to, and I never did anything that was like crime or anything or murder or whatever. So I was like, Let I wanna really find something that um, also is meaningful to me, but also it, it, it coexists with what I'm trying to do and my message I'm trying to, um, push and I stumble upon um, the Zodiac Killer. I, I read about that, but then during that same time, there was another uh, serial killer in San Francisco that was called the Doodler. And the Doodler, basically, he was a serial killer that has never been caught, but he, was, he killed um, only gay men in the Castro district. So I thought that that was very intriguing to me because I was like, okay, why is no one ever really talking about this story? So I only did the first name of all of the victims. And then I kind of sort of created my own story around um, this situation. So, and that's how Trace uh, came about. So Spencer, I'm gonna jump to you. How was it for you kind of being in front of the camera behind the camera and also kind of dealing with the fact that, you know, this really did happen to an extent. Wow, what a loaded question. Um, you know what, I, I have been a fan of Anthony's work for a long time. So I was actually just looking forward to the opportunity of working with him. But then when I um, read the script, I was like, oh, wow, this is something, like you said, nobody's talking about. So I, I just wanted to be a part of it. Um, sometimes be careful what you ask for because I really <laughs> became a part of it in a whole different way. So I was holding multiple uh, roles um, coming in the trace. Uh, and the with COVID and everything else that was happening, I think I kind of just got lost in the work. I didn't really appreciate it as much as I did when we were done with the project. And then looking at it, I was like, oh, wow, we created this and it's kind of amazing. Um, there was so many ups and downs and woo, challenges, you know, not just with COVID, but also dealing with SAG when you're a, a smaller, um, when you're a smaller production company, you don't get the same treatment that everybody else gets, which is something else that we really need to start talking about more. Um, and I'm glad that they're starting to, to bring um, more African-Americans in, um, in the political realm of SAG because there's some things that need to be addressed. But anyways, I am super proud of this project. I'm so glad that I got to be a part of it. And um, I'm, I'm part, I'm glad to be a part of Vim, Vim Media. So Spencer, I'm gonna ask you this question again, because you know, you are in front of the camera and behind the camera. Um, what was it like for you to be a part of the project from the beginning to seeing the final result and the response to it? Oh, um, <laughs> that is, you have to understand that there is so much that happened that the process of making this is pretty much a blur. Um, the things that I remember the most 
is how impressed I was with both Eugenia and Gary um, because the physicality that was involved. You know, they did their own stunts. We brought a stunt coordinator in. We taught them something and, and, and then immediately after that, we shot it. And that's not normally the process when you're on a bigger set. Um, normally it's, it's like up standing, you know, and the standing comes or we're gonna rehearse this for several days and then we're gonna shoot it. But we literally did it like minutes before we shot it. Like, okay, good, she got it. Okay, good, now we're gonna shoot it. Like, and <laughs> I, was, I was just exactly so, like that. so <laughs> impressed with that part of it, watching them like dive, when they say dive in, I mean, literally they, they dove into these characters and became who they needed to become. But like, like they both said, watching them, I felt like that was really who they were. So I was actually like inspired <clears throat> by their performances um, to be a better me on set there was a lot to take on um, and transitioning. I, I come from a, uh, a theater background. So transitioning from theater into television and film is not an easy transition, but it's definitely not an easy transition when you have all these obstacles that are thrown at you. Um, and everything that you can think of, I had it tossed at me. So uh, every time when you asked about the process, it was so much the process that it all became a blur. All I know is when I look at the footage now and when I, you know, when I started looking at what we created, that's when it started to sink in like, oh, my God, we we did that. We made this. I think I think what what the situation is, is that the process of making this um, this series was a. Uh, extremely demanding uh for one um i'm i normally don't do union shows but because i wanted to work with gary and whoever else was a part of it i want that's another element that i took on to make sure that we can get it done so right. dealing dealing with that and on top of i'm sure gary and eugene have seen uh different sides of me and spencer throughout this entire process because it was, <laughs> you know, and they know what we went through and the things that were thrown at us that we had to literally, I mean, for example, we had a COVID officer not come to set and we literally had to sit outside for four hours in the sun until we had a replacement come to let us in the set. They would not let us in to set without a COVID officer. So that alone was just extremely embarrassing, one. And it was, it was just a lot that we had to maintain. And the surprising part, we got every shot that we needed that day and we got done. I don't In know that how we did it, but we did it. We did. I don't know how we did it, but we did it. That was one of the most efficient days ever. Like we yeah. started four hours late. That was wild. <laughs> Intermented with everything. We were all just like, okay, we got to get this done. We have to. Right. And then everybody just be where you're supposed to be at the right time, please. It was, it was that yeah, under pressure feeling. Yeah, and made it. Yeah, and, it, and and it's like my thing is that I I hate it to have to be like that for that day because it's like, I'm used to allowing them their time, their space for them to get in their judge and in their moment, but that was just a lot. <laughs> Can I say something about that though? Like, I think, well, I'll just talk about me. For me, that was cool because I like being under pressure and it makes me feel more efficient because I am a move fast, let's just get this thing done, let's get this thing done person. So um, it helped me a lot with, just being present because we always had to be present that day to get things done and yes. we all had to work right. together and um i come from a big family i have seven brothers and sisters we're all a year and a half two years apart and so mm -hmm. i grew up always having to work together to get something done so it wasn't hard for me and i would like to say anthony Vaughn, you said you're embarrassed but it was like no we we understood what was going on you know what i mean i think that 
You but I mean, it, it was time. embarrassing. It just was embarrassing. It's still like, embarrassing. Yeah. It's still very much so embarrassing. It wasn't when, 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 just when you're the captain of the ship, everything that happens, I know people say don't take it personally, but you do take it personally because you're yeah. in charge. You're the person. You're the, You're at the helm of everything. You're responsible for everyone getting through the day. You're responsible yeah. for things. If they don't happen, you're responsible for that. If yeah. um, somebody doesn't like the way something happens, you're responsible for that. And you know, yeah. I had to wear that hat a lot of times, even <laughs> when things were out of my control. Um, and so it, it makes you feel some kind of way. Um, but I, I mean, thank you for what you said, Eugene. It helps, but it you when you're when you're in it, you're like, mm, oh God, this doesn't feel right. Oh, well, we God, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and we got shut down twice. Yeah. Yes. For COVID. Yes. Twice. Yeah. Now this show, we we had slated that we were supposed to film for a good two weeks <laughs> for this show. That is that not two, what happened. <laughs> that two weeks turned into three months. Yeah. Easy. Three months. Easy. I was, I, I felt like, I felt like um, Eugenia's wig when she took it off the last day. <laughs> 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 She's been wig off. <laughs> she was like, this thing is said, tight. Said, she was like, oh, I don't have to.